and we'll discuss that in the thing, and then it'll kind of make people think. Yes. So this is the sixth episode, I think. Yeah. Episode six. Yeah. Hello, guys. Welcome to The Real Deal with Oscar. I have, you know what, Joe, before we do that, how do I pronounce your last name, man? McElvain. 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 Yes. Okay. You want, you want to go for Joe or Joseph? Uh, you can call me Joe or Joey is my, like, what my friends call me. I have Joseph is more formal or Joe is normal. Joe McElvain. Joe McElvain. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll cut this. Right, right. Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode with Real Deal with Oscar. I have my really good friend. We became very good friends. Uh, Joey, we call him Joey. It goes by Joe. No, this wasn't good, too. Let's do right. one more. Okay, I, you could, most of my professional clients call me Joe. My friends that have known me for years call me Joe. Let's call you Joe, then everybody will know Joe's you. Joe's easy. Yeah. Okay? And, yeah. McElvain. McElvain. Okay. Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode with The Real Deal with Oscar. I have my great friend and a colleague. I work together, Joe McElvain. Uh, Joe McElvain is a professional real estate photographer, and I want to emphasize he does real estate photography, and it has, and it takes a special eye, which he found it later in life. Hello, Joy. How you doing? I'm doing great, Oscar. How are you today? Very good. Thanks for coming in, man. My so pleasure, this buddy. has been great. We've been talking yeah. about that working together. We have. But knowing you, you're always busy. You have a few shoots every day. So I've been fairly busy for the last couple of years. Yes. Unbelievable. Tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you come to Fort Lauderdale? Were you born in Florida? Tell us a little bit about that before we get into the. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually born and raised in New Jersey. I lived in uh, South Jersey near Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the first 25 years of my adult life, I was a carpenter. So um, carpenter. I, I started off wow. as a carpenter when I was 14 years old. I'd work the summers. My next door neighbor was a contractor and I, I worked for him during the summers. And when I graduated high school, I went full time. And then Do you like, actually go to a carpenting school or no school? No schooling. So it's like a trade that you learn right. from a master, right? So my, my my next door neighbor was a framing contractor. He framed houses, did new construction, okay. and um, you know I just I carried wood, that, stuff like that. But um, when I graduated, I started working for him full time, and then after a couple of years, I actually branched off on my own, started my own business. So you were actually framing other people's homes, like yes. kind of like in the building part of the right. construction you, you, side? You go to a, a development, you know, it'd be slabs and piles of lumber, and then in a few days you'd have a house sticked up. Very cool. So this was in back in New Jersey? Right. This is back in the, in the mid-80s is when I got started. So how old were you like when you first started? Um, well, like I said, I was 14 when I very first started. Oh, wow. But, uh, <laughs> You're right like me. I started right working at, at 13. Yeah, yeah right. I, I worked for him every summer when when, uh, yeah, when school was off. I worked in the summer and, and weekends and vacation days. Well, when you decided that, you know what, I think this is something that I can make money with, that was around like the age of 14, I mean 20, 19, 20. I just loved doing it. So I knew when I got out of high school, I wanted to go work full time. Okay. Uh, with with my next door neighbor. So So you did it for a while. How long did you do that for? Up until uh basically till I came here in Florida in 2009. So hold on a sec. So you've been living in South Florida for 14 years. 14 years on June 5th. Wow. So this was a career change for you because this was a my midlife crisis. <laughs> I, I could have bought a Corvette, got a 20-year-old girlfriend, and instead I decided to become a computer nerd. There's nothing wrong but buying a Corvette and getting a younger girlfriend, by the way, but I think this is more beneficial uh, as I a think, person. I think I'd made the right move. Yeah, I think so. So how did you get into the real estate? I guess you had an eye by building stuff. How did it go? Um, well... I'm going to give you the medium story because we don't want this podcast to last five hours. But what had happened is, and you recall that there was a mortgage crisis back in the mid 2000s. Yeah. And I was up in New Jersey, and 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 I had just kind of seen this coming before it came, and then I started hearing this term called uh, yeah, yeah. loan modification. Loan modification. And, that? and and I said to my my wife at the time, I said, you know what, that's going to be a big business. So what happened was. Um, I always had a, uh, computers were always a hobby of mine. So I, I built these landing pages and I was collecting information from people that were behind on their mortgages and selling them to attorneys. Oh, so and you saw the problem. You said, okay, a lot of people are going to be defaulting on their mortgages. 
Right. Why can't we just modify these and then create landing pages? Right. And you can sell the leads where you, you were oh, selling. The- what I, well, what, actually, what I, I started off wanting to maybe the, these these loan modification companies were hiring counselors. You would call people okay. and discuss their problem and then pass it on to them. But you had to buy your own leads, mm-hmm. and they were a fortune to buy. So I got this idea that well, let me try build my own landing page and and. Open a Google. So why didn't you become a real estate agent, try to sell it, or become a loan officer? Um, well, what happened was I realized that this whole windfall of real estate mortgage leads or you know loan modification leads was eventually going to come to an end. Yeah. So I wouldn't. I was actually making a, a pretty good living just selling these leads. So I I thought you know what let me um, I I kept was down here, and I thought to myself you know what it was, there's a it's a lot different here than it is up north. Correct. And I thought, you know what, let me take some of this skill that I've learned building landing pages and start doing websites for real estate, yeah. right? <laughs> and there was, a, there was a real estate agent that was with Balustrade Realty, and, and he was letting me do these walkthrough videos for him, which was another idea I had to do. That's how I actually started, was doing walkthrough videos. I've clamped a camcorder onto a glide cam. and I would Nobody did that back then. I remember when I right. first started in real estate eight, nine years ago. Right. I mean, you would just we would just print out sheets. Zillow wasn't around. So when people came right. to us, I'm like, I want to buy a condo. I'm like, ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you right. know, well, we'll just print out some stuff. We'll take you there. Yeah, so I was, I was doing that just for him. And then um, he introduced me to another agent there, and I wound up building him a website. Okay. And it actually came out pretty good. It took me a little time to learn how to do it, but the site came out good. And then one thing led to another. I was doing all these websites. Okay. Um, And I thought to myself, how could I, you know, get more revenue from my client base? So I thought, well, maybe I could do photography. So I got this idea that I'll buy a camera and start taking pictures of houses. So your initial idea was like, you know what? I'm making a lot of money with the leads and it's good, but it's going to stop somehow. Exactly. And I don't want to restart something, try to figure out what I'm going to do next. You said, you know, I'm going to come up with an idea that it's going to be lucrative and people are going to need it in this profession. So it started with a website. You're like, wow, I did this pretty good, (laughs) right? So why don't I take some photos and then start the photography business? Right. So... uh, how did you like? What was your first uh, camera that you started with? Did you start very s- minimal, or you went all out? I, no, no, I, I started very minimal. Um, my first camera was a Canon T two I, which is a crop frame camera. Now I did spend a little bit of money on a good wide angle lens. Yeah. Yeah. that's good. Yeah, um, and for until that camera died, that's what I used. So, how much was that first camera? Now we're talking about 2009 era. Yeah, I, I I bought it used. I bought it on Craigslist. A couple hundred paid bucks, like three hundred bucks for it. I paid about seven for the lens, though. Seven. So I had about a thousand dollars wrapped up in the whole thing. Okay, but then you have to get the tripod. Then you right. figured it out. I guess a little bit lighting, this and that. You know, yeah, yeah. computer the software. I was from- using flash, and and uh, you know, I I kind of started phasing away from that after a couple of years. So how how it's so interesting because I had different businesses in. And, you know, I, I found that before you start something, learning is one of the essential items, anything that you start with. And the best way to learn is, is just like throw yourself in it. You know, exactly. learn, make mistakes. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. So you did this and you made business card for yourself and you said, I'm a business, I'm a real estate photographer. Right. Um, not, not, not quite. Um, the, the first client that had purchased a website from me let me take pictures of some of his listings. Now, I told him I'd do it for free. He, and he had a photographer. I like that. I said, you know, I'll, I'll shoot your photos. Let me get in there, and, and you don't have to pay me, but I need to get some experience in different Lightings, two-story homes, condos, whatever. Right. So he was very patient with me, and then uh, then he decided to start using me. Now, I look back at some of the pictures I took. And I'm like, man, <laughs> he must have really liked me because I can't believe he paid me for those pictures. Did they have, at that time... Professional uh, photographers or people were taking pictures. Yeah, at that time, and you know, I, I had zero photography experience. I mean, my photography experience was taking pictures of my wife and kids during their birthdays. And as a matter of fact, my wife would say what horrible pictures I took. So in my head, I sucked as a photographer. Yeah, and I just kind of taught myself how to do it. And and how I did that was 
I must have photographed my own place 200 times. Wow. Wow. It, Practice makes it perfect, yeah, I right? Mean, literally 200 times. I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> just, just tweaking and trying to mess with the settings and learn the camera. And I was at, you know, back then bookstores were still popular. So I was at the bookstore buying books on cameras and just trying to learn how it works. So uh, what did you find right off the bat? Like, oh, wow, this is hard. Or this is like, this is going to be hard for me. Or what, um, what was your thought process? The, the lighting. The hardest thing was to figure out how to balance out the lighting. You know, in the I, beginning, I, that was the hardest. Honestly, part. like when I decided to put this podcast together, him, you and I, we had a few conversations, and I talked to a few people in the camera industry and everything. And the hardest thing for me was this lighting. I mean, getting this all light. It's either right. that blue that behind me fades out so quick, you know, right. or there's a glare or it's too dark it's too bright just finding the right lighting i found that you have to find a blank canvas right. that's what i black out this room so we can control the lighting but photography it's a lot difficult than um, right. you the, know video just, i mean just as just from a from an exposure and color standpoint that was the first challenge that I had to overcome. That, oh, okay, Joe, you just like put fire in my mind because how many people actually take photos of a beautiful view in an afternoon and you look at the photo and you can't see the view? Right, it's blown out. It's blown out. The exposure levels are so high, it's just a big whiteout. Right. right? But I call Joe. Joe comes and takes a shot. I'm like, oh, wow, it's still a nice bright room. And also we have that beautiful view depicted in the photo. Right. And it's not artificial. It's real picture. It's just the way you take the photo. And I think there's a lot of editing after you take the photos, right? Um, well, actually, it's, there's not a lot that I have to manually do. Okay. Um, in the beginning, I was using a flash, and there's nothing wrong with flash photography. But I think for real estate, the uh, quote-unquote HDR where you're taking multiple exposures and blending those exposures together gives you the most realistic look. Correct. So I do have a camera sometimes, like prior to the open on this conversation, like a lot of the real estate agents, like you have a nice listing for sale, you want to invest the money, get a professional photographer such as yourself and do that. But sometimes you take listings there for rental and there's not much money in it, right? So uh, a lot of professionals like me, we have really good cameras with the ideas. Like, I'll take a picture of this, like 10 of them, right? Right. And I found very quick that, you know, uh, you, you just don't get the angles. You don't get the lighting. Right. Then it's just in my nature. I like to read and learn on my own. And I found that it's such a thing called stacking, right? Right. That's, it's, that's what you do. Basically, yes. And expensive cameras take stacking photos, like five, six of them. It's up to you, or right. three of them, right. in different exposure levels, and then you can just merge them. You still have to merge them manually. No, I don't know. I, I do it all. I'm not going to give away all my secrets. <laughs> don't okay. show it to me. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> it, and it, believe me, it took me years. I have my own way of doing it. Oh, 100%. And, and I have a workflow that it, I've just been constantly, I'm always trying to get better and faster. Correct. You know, I, I, it's just giving away stuff. Emerald, you know, the cook, you know, right. Martha Stewart, they wrote many books about how to cook, right. how to do things. I mean, it's right. just you have the, you know, touch, you have the knowledge, you right. have the way of doing things. I think nobody would be able to copy what you right, are doing just right. by giving well, it. Well, I mean, nobody could copy me anyway because I'm one of a kind. 100%. Um, one and, and only. <laughs> and, 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 and the truth, all kidding aside, is that it's a lot of the business. And, the, you know, I've, I've started with one client. No. And I've now worked with over 250 agents. Well, have you I, advertised? I don't have a business card. I don't have a website. Wow. I've, I've never advertised. Word so of all mouth. All 250 agents that i work with have come by word of mouth wow so i say to you know sometimes my agents get well, you are my best business card you're <laughs> my best true. and Thank your you. listings that are online are my best website exactly so that what happens is an agent will will either maybe a new agent will come to an office and they'll ask an agent hey, do you, i got a listing can you recommend a photographer i'll get an agent that way but i also get a lot of, of uh, clients that an agent will see my photography for a listing and actually reach out to the agent and say, who's your photographer? Which like, that's very flattering. Cause in my head, I'm still a carpenter with a camera. hundred percent. And I'm like, wow, man, you are still an artist actually are coming out to me 
or, or reaching out to, to get me to do it. And it was hard for me to wrap that around my head in the beginning. Like, wow, I'm, like, maybe I am doing a pretty good job then. Well, honestly, what I like about you when I first met you, I think we met through one of our friends, Kim. She was, Kim, she was yeah, Kim Fitch. Kim Fitch, yeah, she's a yeah. really good friend of mine. Hi, Kimmy, I know you're watching. <laughs> I hope she's watching. <laughs> she, you better be watching it. But I, I, I remember asking Kim, it's like, hey, who's taking your photo? She was like, hey, I got this guy, Joe. He's like the best in town. You got to call him up. And I remember just talking to you, and you were very open, very casual, very friendly. And I remember just working on one of the listings together. And what I like about your photography uh, from the get-go that, you know, it's not that you would see the photos online. In today's market, everybody's seeing photos online. And you come to the unit, you're like, oh, wow, this is like, this is not exactly what I thought in mind because it was totally a proportion in editing process and all of that stuff. Right. You know, sometimes it just looks huge. Sometimes it looks too small. Like anything you wanted to do, some photographers, they just play with it too much. Right. And there's time and place for it, of course. But I, I find your photography very natural. Right. Like if somebody came in took a shot that, you know, this is the shot that I would have loved to take, you know, and right. it just depicts the place exactly how it is. And I think that's what makes your photography business very, very successful. Right. And, and we had talked about that earlier that, you know, my, my mindset is that I'm taking the photos for the buyer. Correct. And if I could use an analogy, it would be like online dating. Okay. If you're a person and you're going to go on an online dating site, you want to go get really nice pictures of yourself because, but you're never going to look like that ever again. When somebody knocks on your door, catfish, and, <laughs> not, not quite a catfish, but, but what happens is this: if if you take a, a property and you just make it too good, the buyers has has a thought in their head already what they're going to see when they walk through the door. Correct. And this is why I don't use flash because flash just makes everything pop too much. And I think when someone, especially, you know, houses tend to be a little on the dark side it, when you're in them. Correct. So, especially you taking most of your shot during the day. So right. the lights are not on. So you, right. you know, depend on the natural and light. You, you don't want the buyer's first emotion to be disappointment. Correct. You want them to be, you know, oh, this place is. Just nice, like just like I seen in the pictures. So I really try hard to do that. I don't go crazy with those window pops where it just looks like the window out the view. I know I've like, seen some of those. Like Picasso came out of the grave and just I painted mean, him overnight. <laughs> don't get me wrong; it looks impressive. I know, and it's a really it's it's a skill to get that done, and it's time consuming. But it, it's when the buyer walks in the door, they're never going to see that view. Correct. And so you don't want it to be, oh, man, I was look, they're looking for this amazing view that's just okay. So I was actually reading about it online. You know, right. I always do a little bit research about the exposure levels of the camera and all of that stuff. Since I have a really good camera, which I don't know how to use 90% of the functions, but I can video shoot it, thank God. And in real estate photography, now a lot of the photographers are, you know, arguing that, you know, we talked about that exposure levels being high when you look from inside to out. So they're saying that, well, I don't want to edit that. I want as natural as possible. And then you have the other side, you know, other extreme is like, well, we want to make it as, you know, it's it's an art. We want right. to emphasize every little detail in it. Right. And I think both sides are kind of like on the losing side. I like the middle. Right. Like you want to be able to show a little bit of the outside view you know, with a little bit edited, and I think it just helps, you know. Right. Like, our natural, nothing is going to be our, like, natural eye, I guess, right? Right. I mean, it's, that's very difficult to put on, on, well, not film anymore, but put digitally what our eyes see. Our eyes are an amazing thing. I mean, we have the best photography and best they're, they're cameras. They're incredible. The, the guy that invents a camera sensor that can mimic the human eye is going to be a, a bazillionaire. But, um... Uh, getting back to what we were saying is I especially v views. I want to present a really nice view, but I I'm hoping that when the buyer comes it's on a nice day and it looks even better because that's it's an emotional thing that wow, it looked great in pictures, it looks even better when I'm here. Correct. And you know, I realize with a few things that are working with you, you tend to remove the towels from the bathrooms or the rugs. Right. And uh, some of the personal items or leave him or keep him. How do you feel about that for photography? I, I think that less is more. Yeah. So especially in bathrooms and kitchens. Like personally, 
I want everything out of the bathroom. Shampoo the bottles, everything. Maybe if you have like a decorative soap dispenser. And then even then, again, this is just from years of doing it, repetition, is that I'll make sure that the soap dispenser is on the far end of the sink because if it's close to the camera, the, the soap dispenser looks huge. Same with the, with the hand towels. Oh, wow. People like to put hand towels on their countertops in the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. And it looks great. In person, but in a picture, it looks like a beach tail yeah. that's on your countertop. So I, I remove all that stuff, and some people don't. You know, they're like, why are you taking it? Trust me, it, it looks great in full scale, but in a picture, you don't want this. It'll look a lot better. And besides, the, the buyer's not buying your tails and your toothbrushes. 100%, and I believe in that. So uh, let me ask you a question. Like, uh, I work with you many times, and I say, hey, Joey, here's the address. Let's go shoot it. I, I like to come with you sometimes. It's fun, you know, right. just talking to you. But sometimes I'm busy, like last shootings we did. You know, you went there on your own, and I have full trust in you. And what are the challenges? Like, when, when some does that how it works? Other agents, too? Like, they just give you, shoot you an address, you meet him, and then you Google the property, or you have a plan in head, or you just go in there, and then you're like, all right, this is how I'm going to do it. I, I would say... Probably, I, of course, in the beginning, the agent was always at the jobs. Yeah. But now I've I've had years that I've worked with the same agent. Sure, so there's certain I, confidence. I, I would and... say probably 50% of the jobs I go to, I'm on my own, or the agent might be there for just a little bit and leave. Just to, do you prefer by yourself, or you prefer with the agent, or the owners are home? How, what do you prefer? Um, I prefer... That nobody's there only yeah. because I can move quickly through the house. Mm-hmm. Some, sometimes people don't get that I got a really wide lens and they're thinking they're not in the shot. And I, I just don't like having to ask people to move constantly. I can, you know, kind of playing musical chairs with them. So yeah. if they're if they're not in the property, it's just quicker and easier yeah. for me now. Of course, if nobody's home and I you know, and I'm I'm in there, it's, it's a breeze. I, you know, I put some music on my phone and I'm going through the house and. It's, and also, you're not talking to getting distracted but, to people, right? But the but the truth is, I really enjoy my clients. So you know, a, a big portion of my business is just the relationship with the clients. So I always look forward to seeing them. That they, they, they're all like friends. Of so course. because I've been doing it for like you, I mean, yeah. it's like yeah, it's it's okay if you're not there, you can't make it. But I just like that we're there. We could you know, have a little conversation, catch up on. Yeah, things. we always do. Like, hey, Joe, this and that, and, you know. And it's I, a relationship, and yeah, and, I, and that's why I said, it, you know, to to have a decent business in photography, it's you got to establish relationships. It's not just about the pictures. So, how about the property? Do you Google the property before you go, or you say like, how do you? Um, normally, I won't. Uh, no, I will map. You know, Google map it. Okay. Ahead of time, just so I know when I have to leave. Okay. And but I don't really go into detail to. So, like, what do you do? Like, you pull up to the... Do you like... The reason that I'm asking that, are you getting such a high from, like, this is going to be a challenge? Like, you just show up and like, oh, this is different. Or not you're like, ah, I've just done it for a long time. I'm just going to do it. Not anymore. Not yeah, anymore. There, there was a time where I'd you know, be really anxious yeah. in a bad way, like, you know, wondering what I'm going to be dealing with because I didn't fully understand how to handle lighting. But that's a good question, like... Does it make you nervous to, you know, shoot a three hundred thousand dollar property or a ten million dollar property? No, it doesn't make me nervous. I, I shot a twenty seven million dollar place. Twenty seven million dollars. And I shot it just like I was shooting a seven hundred dollar a month rental. Cool. Yeah, so I mean, you don't put any pressure on yourself. No, and- not at all. Wow, that's very cool. That's very cool. So any challenges during your shoot? What is the most challenging thing? You said lighting was one. Um, lighting is is probably at this point even lighting is not that much of a challenge when i walk into a house i kind of know how i'm going to set the camera up and then in post um we were talking about you know what do i do when i get back well over the years you're you're familiar with lightroom yeah of course i've okay. been using it right it's pretty so, difficult and o- they charge you 20 dollars a month over the years i've developed presets yeah. for lightroom and i have multiple presets so depending on whether the, the the lighting is on the warm side or the cool side i just take a look at the different presets see which one oh you have presets on lightroom yeah so w- oh, once I, I i use software that will blend the, yeah. the stacks know, the, the stacks or brackets or whatever you want to call them 
and then I'll take those and move them in the light room and get them to where they're a hundred percent beside, you know, maybe having to move, remove the uh, tripod out or, you know, Photoshop, any Photoshop work, I'll, then I'll bring it into Photoshop and, and do any touch up stuff. Well, honestly, like I, I have done a couple of shoots just because I got this camera. I was very excited and I started YouTube and stagging all of that stuff. I, right. I got the Lightroom and I was thinking like not never not call you. I knew I would always depend on you in photography. Right. But I just wanted to know for my own good. Like if I go on vacation, instead of taking iPhone photos, I'm thinking like I got a nice camera, a Sony camera. I'll bring it with me and right. stack it, this and this and that. So I took uh, photography of... I, I, I took photos of one of my listings that you have taken photos of it. Right. And I wanted to compare my skills towards yours, which you've blown me away, of course. And how difficult and tedious the work is. I mean, you know, here you are, you're adjusting and stacking one photo, right? And you have the second one in a different exposure levels. You know, like when you take the photos, everything looks the same. Like you took everything at the same time with the same amount of lighting, you know? Right. And it's a great skill. It's part of the artistry, I think. Right. You know, more than anything. And, you know, I take my hat off for you. It's I, it's years of knowledge, you know? That, that's all it is. It's, it's just a lot of repetitions, a lot of playing around and tweaking with the settings on my camera when I'm in the field and then the the adjustments when I'm home doing the processing. Well, you know, one of my clients, Steve Califor, he was a very, very successful guy from New Jersey. I think he was in the top 10 and most successful people in New Jersey. And I always ask him tips about how to be more successful. And taking him into account that I thought that he was one of the most successful people that I know. And he always said, Oscar, work with people, uh, what they specialize. You want to paint your place? Find a painter. Right. You want to take photos, they, they find a photographer. Do not try to do things on your own. Right. right. I always say if you promise not to shoot your listing, I promise not to get a real estate license. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> uh, because you could ultimately get your real estate license. Right. You would never wanted to get into the real estate selling part of it? Um, I can't say no, only because... Being a photographer and being that I don't have other photographers, which that's something I'm considering maybe down the road to bring in a couple of people. Um, you know, there's a limit income wise to what you can make doing it. Where where the, the the income threshold's a lot higher for a real estate agent that's good at what they do. But I just kind of like Joe, knowing you for all these years working with you, you're a very humble guy, and you are right. a very very genuine guy. I think you are not money driven. I think you are passion right. driven and you just, you know, like you said that, hey, I was 13, 14 years old. I knew that I wanted to be a carpenter. You're an artist. You like when people like your stuff or you like when, right. you know, put something on the market. Like, I'm sure it gives you such a pleasure to shoot a $27 million home looking back at yourself like, wow, here's a guy who was taking free photos. Right. Now I'm shooting $27 million homes. It's such an achievement in your career. Right. But... Just knowing you, I always knew that you are not money driven. You just want to do the right thing and get pleasure out of you know something so creative. Right, and it was the same when I had the construction business. I really wasn't driven by money as much as I was driven of. I like doing a good job and having a good reputation, and and my construction business is the same. You know, when guys were running around with these big fancy trucks all lettered up, I just had a plain old gold pickup with yeah. an air compressor and a generator in the back, and if you wanted to get a hold of me. You had to go through some effort to find me. Correct. And I do the same thing with the photography that I would rather an agent go through the effort to find me because then I know they've already seen my work. They've already talked to another agent. So that part's already taken care of. I don't think people bargain your work at this point of your career. Oh, no, they still do. But, <laughs> Realtors, and, and, man. <laughs> and yeah, and I, I get it. It's an expense. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there was a time where I was I would discount new clients okay. and now i kind of do it arbitrarily but there was a time where well, depending would, if it's a new young agent you know it was they, a new client and i didn't have as much of a portfolio mm -hmm. that they could go back on but now i mean i've, I've probably at this point shot at least 3500 houses of, of course so, that's great and you do drone shots 
do drones. I do the uh, Matterport virtual tours. Matterport is the one three D. Actually, he you actually set this camera. It does three sixty. Yes. And kind of have the uh, layout of the house. Right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, they are cool, and and they also generate a really very accurate floor plan. Yeah. Which to me, that's the best feature of the Matterport is that floor plan because according to the NAR, that's on the top of the list that buyers want. Really? They want to be able Buyers, to like 3D they, walk through? If, if you were going to go down the list, number one is they want good photos. Pictures, good photos. Number two is blueprints or uh, floor plans. Yeah. They and want then after that would be your virtual tours, your videos, and stuff like that. But those are the top two things that a buyer wants. Let me ask you something. I got into a conversation with one of my clients that I know you like to take a lot of photos, so I get to choose. Uh as a realtor, I'm always thinking like, well, more photos are the better, right? Right. You want to just literally like if somebody's, especially since COVID has been around, a lot of people are buying properties comfortably, you know, sight unseen. Right. And and I, I get sometimes feedback from my clients like, well, who's going to look through 60 photos, you know? Right. You need, you know, one photo of the kitchen. And I'm always thinking like, yeah, you might feel that way because you're very familiar with the property. Right, but if I'm a person that hasn't been to Fort Lauderdale and I'm trying to purchase a place, I want to see like every corner of that kitchen. Kind of like gives me the idea. Right. What do you feel about that? I, I feel the same way that you know, in, in my head, as an agent, as a real estate agent, when you're putting your pictures online, you try to create a story. Yes. Of the house. I always. Right. I always do like when you shoot me the photos in the link, mm -hmm. and I know you had an idea. Me as a realtor. Because I'm gonna be the one selling it, I always have a storyline coming in. Right. You know, if the if the outside of the building is nice, I know by looking at photos too, I'll just shoot like one picture of the outside, and then I immediately go into the entry. If right. the kitchen is highlighted, I start with the kitchen flow through the whole property, and if it's a condo and amenities and all of that stuff, drone shots, I always leave them at the end. Right. Because the essential part is gonna be. Uh, the interior of the unit right. after like in the neighborhood. Right. In most cases, I mean, there are some properties, especially condos where you're better off showing the amenities first. Oh, you like that too. <laughs> See, well, it's just because sometimes some of the, some of these places aren't like pretty to look at. A lot of them, stuff I'm shooting is empty. Yeah. So you want to show the nice stuff first. Yeah. So really, you want to front load your listing with the wow shots. Correct. And then just kind of from there, tell your story. You know, I sit down with people sometimes I, in my office and um, we go through these things, right? And especially the Gold Ocean Mall, there's a lot of condos and they have really good amenities, which nobody uses them. Right. But people pay a lot of money for those in their HOA payments. Right, right. Uh, well, uh, I guess it's like having 10 pairs of shoes, you know. You're not going to wear them all at once, but if you want, you have options. I think people like that exactly. at a certain demographics. But... You know, sitting down these, with these people, everybody's like, well, let me see the kitchen. Which pictures? Why do, why do we have to go through like 30 different photos? I think it's just a mindset. Some people prefer to see amenities. That's why they're buying into the property. Right. Some people are like, I just want to see the ocean. I don't care. I'm never going to use them. So you have different, you know, people in different parts of the transaction. Exactly. I, mean, I, th I believe there's, there's you know, uh, communities and condos that are well known for their amenities. Yeah. And those you want to put some emphasis on. And then there's other ones where they just got your standard swimming pool or, or uh, a little gym. You don't have to make a big deal out of that. So let me ask you, like, when you started 14 years ago, right, like over 10 years ago right. in real estate photography and today's real estate photography, what are the main differences? What has evolved in a positive and a negative way, you would say? Um, I would say that um, when I first started, there were, were a couple of, I guess you would call them big photo companies that were nationwide that would just hire photographers. Oh, wow. They didn't have individuals. Yeah, And uh, there was uh, Circle Picks. There was OBO, uh, VHT. And they were in the into these 360 virtual tours. They were really popular at the time, mm -hmm. okay. where uh, you, each shot was just a 360 view. Oh, you could just like with your mouse, and then you just see the whole right. Thing. But it was almost like you were in a fishbowl. They they were, but but it was it was a thing at the time. Okay. So those have kind of gone by the wayside. Now you're you're getting these matter ports, and um, what has gotten kind of popular lately are the walkthrough videos. Yeah. The actual videos. I actually yeah. like making my own, you know, my right. videos. And, and you know what? 
I like that you like making your own because <laughs> I really don't want to do it. I know you but don't if, want But if somebody wants me to do it, I'm happy to do it. But if you want to do your own, I'm not going to twist your arm to have me do it. You know how I started doing those, just not to cut you off in the question, but uh, I, I found that I had an eye for photography and I, right. I had the office. I have these you know TVs in here. And instead of just putting news channels, I said, why don't I just take videos of my listings and slapping them on there? Right. And initially, I just took my iPhone, just taking like nice videos, and then I just put them up there. And more I watch them, more I criticize is my, you know, I'm like, I got to edit these things, make it look better. Right. And then, you know, just got into it. And I actually enjoy and love doing them in a like a, you know, weird way. It just keeps right. my mind very, very calm as I'm working on that. Right. And it makes me recognize the property and know the property a little bit more. Because when you watch it and somebody else is watching, I want to feel, I want to give him what I, what I feel about the property. Right. You're telling the story. I'm telling the, the story. Exactly. And the music. I find music is very uh, uh, effective. Right. What type of music you want, you know, more calm music, you want upbeat, depending on where the property is located. It's something I like. It's very hard to do it. It took me months to figure out how to edit and all that stuff. I don't recommend anybody. Just hire Joe to do it. But or, it's very or hire Oscar. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> yeah. either, either you do shoot photography and, or sell real estate. So one there or the other. <laughs> so what are the... I know drones are a big thing now. Drones. And I was like the last holdout on drones, believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, you didn't only, think it, it served a value? No, I, I, I thought it served a value. But I liked going up in the helicopter. So I gave up. Uh-huh. I had to give up going up in the helicopter. I mean, Tell me about no those choice. helicopter shots. You yeah, used to go so, in a helicopter to yeah, take shots. Yeah, uh, back before drones, the only time you really would do aerials were for high-end homes. Yeah, like $10 million. Well, even yeah. a million. Yeah, yeah. Back, back in the day, a million dollars was expensive. Now a million how, dollars how, is... Tell me about a helicopter shoot experience real quick. Um, you would just leave from an executive airport in here? or Yeah, I would fly out of Pompano. Okay. And um, what I would try to do is is get several people that needed aerials and so that I could get up there and do it all at one time. How did and, that work out? You would just call people, hey, man, you want your photos? Because no, no, I remember they used to take boat pictures, remember? Right. They used to send it to you if you wanted. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Now, what, what would happen is I would get, if it was a high-end house and somebody wanted um Aerials of the place, a high end house, or some of these oceanfront condos. A yeah. lot of times you, they would want aerial shots, like of the Gulf. I've shot the sure. Gulf. Well, I, I, matter of fact, I hired a, uh, a helicopter one time and I just went out and shot a ton of condos. So I had them in inventory. I was going to say, such a great idea. And then you can just sell it online. Right. You live in Playa del Mar, no problem. I got shots of Playa right. del Mar. Right. So I had a little bit of a library of condos. Okay. But then I would get individual homes. So those, I would try to see if I could get two or three people okay. that wanted to get aerial shots of their homes. And they would be higher-end homes normally because of, of what you would have to charge. How long was the ride for the helicopter? It's just by itself is fun. Fast. <laughs> it's too fast. I loved going up in the helicopter. Yeah. So, um, and and the, the, the service that I use actually charged... Uh, it was like, I, I want to say $250 an hour. Wow. But back then, we're talking about 10 years but ago. They, I think they're still around the same price, but they bill in six-minute increments. So if you were only up for 24 minutes, oh wow, then you only had to pay for the 24 minutes that you were in the air. Okay. So I would try to get it and map out my route so that I could shoot the most properties the quickest, and then I could pass that savings along to the agents so they could give them affordable aerials. Okay, that's very cool. And and I would tell my clients, I loved going up in the helicopter. Matter of fact, one of my um, bucket list things is to get a helicopter's pilot license. You I should. Would, it's a yeah, lot of hours, though. Yeah, it's I, it, but I it's like on my bucket list. I want to do it eventually. Hopefully, I can do it. I'm right sure now, you're going to do it. Pilot, but um, I would I would go up and and just shoot. You know, sometimes three or four properties. But at I once. mean, shooting from a helicopter. Just I remember seeing a guy who was taking a picture of a boat that I was invited on years ago. And I remember these guys on the helicopter, they just snap like on the weekends, like really good looking boats. And I guess the vessels got numbers. They take a picture and they mail you a copy of it. It's like, oh my God, this is me on my boat, you know? And then they charge you like five, $600 for that shot. 
Right. But I remember the guy being strapped on a helicopter, just you know, leaning towards it to get that shot. Were you doing oh, all of that I, stuff? I was, I was a lunatic. <laughs> all I had was a lap belt, and I was hanging out the side of the helicopter. Oh my god! Yeah, they didn't even have a door on it. Oh so my the god! The door was off, and it was just one of them little R. I think it's a R forty four. That's for two people. That's the two seater. Okay. And I'd go up, no doors, seat belt. And just hang out the side. Unbelievable. And, and you know, when, the very first time I went up, I had no experience. So I had to learn. The pilot actually helped me out because he had worked with other real estate photographers. Like what? Like, um, Well, in my head, I was thinking that you would shoot a house the same way you shoot it with a drone. You, you go up, you, you frame the shot. And up, then you, you just hover. look kind of. With the helicopters, you don't hover. Oh, you, you, just, you, you, you do concentric circles around the house so you'll maybe um and don't hold me to this altitude wise because there's altitude limits on helicopters Correct. that they could fly legally or safely or whatever but you would you would circle a house at let's just say 150 feet then you'd go up to 200 feet and a wider circle and you're constantly moving and, you, and you're just going click 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 and so now you got like 90 pictures and you're going to pick the best three or four out of oh, those wow. nine. lots of work yeah. right and then crop them and to, to create a zoom effect so it was a lot more work up in the air to get it done and you know the other thing is that that if you don't got your exposure and everything set right because oh. it's not like you're doing brackets you can't yeah. do brackets when the you're telegram. constantly taking photos you're and just just clicking off a ton of pictures and then when you get down you know and you and you go how much were you charging for shoots like that just wondering like um i think at that time i was charging it would it would depend because you know i'm i i'm a customer centric guy so i'm like Correct. if i could save money on the helicopter i'm going to pass that on to my client i understand but you know just wondering so like, i would charge them helicopter time plus a hundred dollars oh wow that was still a great and, deal oh, i told him I, I always say oh, don't i would do the photos for free just for the helicopter ride. <laughs> just for the ride i just love going up in the helicopter <laughs> Would so, be great to have a four seater helicopter, have the owner and the agent in the back. Right. They would, then they would tell you, try to tell you what to do and all of that stuff, probably. And, and, and well, it's hard because, you know, you, you're, you got a longer lens. I'm not using a wide angle lens. You're using a, a, a lot tighter lens and you're trying to zoom in. Yeah. And it, it was completely different than shooting the other way. Correct. So tell me something negative that you have seen that happen in the uh, real estate photography for the past 10 years a decade um i'm trying to think if there's anything negative i just i just think that is o- overall the the quality of photos have gotten better if i i would in general from all the photographers they they're the pictures are a lot better than they were 10 years ago and a lot of that has to do with technology correct but do you think today's technology with the upcoming ai you know, roaring in the background, is you think the AI is going to start taking photography? Um, I I don't think so, only because there's just so many variables yeah. in getting a good shot. Like we, and we were getting in when we first started talking that in my head, and I think most photographers that are inexperienced starting out, they're more focused on equipment that if I have the right equipment, I'm going to be able to take great pictures. Correct. And that is part of it. But yeah. Nothing like having a fast car and you know how to drive it. You make a great race, you know, but what you learn real quick is that, you know, with a camera, if you, as long as you take decent pictures mm-hmm. uh, for, from, from a, a, an exposure standpoint, as long as you got decent shots with software, you could take an okay picture and make it really nice but the one thing you can't change is where you were when you took the position of your camera the height the angle and all that so i i think unless you have a human being now ai might make processing the photos a little easier i think they already do like you know they have the auto automatic button that kind of like looks at it you know right that you know that that part might be done but the what I learned is the real skill in real estate photography is composition over everything else. It's that, still artistry. It's still there. Definitely. Knowing where to put the camera, knowing the height to put the camera, the angle to tilt the camera. It That's what makes the pictures interesting for the buyer, which we all know that it's all an emotional-based thing. So you've got to invoke some kind of emotion 
with the person that's looking at the photo so that they get on the phone and give you a call. 100%. That's like I tell all of my clients, like the idea of taking these photos to create enough attention for that specific property that makes that client, a prospect, prospective buyer saying like, I'm going to give this guy a phone call. This looks like a really nice property. Right. Right. And the next thing that they want to come and see it and the expectation matches the, the, the first impression, boom. Right. We got a deal. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I will say that um, the one thing that I had never experienced until just after the pandemic hit was that. How important. That, well, that um, people were buying houses with no photos. <laughs> yeah. I, I sold. I sold maybe like five or six properties, literally sight on scene. Right. And I remember one of them was the Edgewater Arms in here. You shot that place, too. Yes. Uh, that was like a fourth floor. Uh, remember shooting that place? Yep, I remember. It was a really cool place. It was a two bedroom, but it turned into a one bedroom. And this eye doctor from up north said, I'll take it. And right. I, I just couldn't believe it. I kept saying to myself, he's never been in here. Right. But he's like, let's do a FaceTime through WhatsApp because that was the only way of doing it with the good right. reception in that building. And we did that. And his, his wife kept saying in the background, yep, just like the photos. Just like the photos, right. just like the photos, but we'll, we'll take it. That was that was a really good deal. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I mean, the, the truth of the matter is to to get a house sold. Um, you know, part of your your challenge is to get it sold for the most amount of money for your seller. Yeah. And I think in in order to do that, that you need a good agent, and you need decent photography. And outside of that, everything else you really don't need. Well, that's the thing. Like, I, I have this, you know, clients always ask me, like, what's your strategy of selling my place? Well, number one, we want to get really good pictures. I, I work with a professional photographer, Joey. You know, he's been doing all of my photos. People ask me, like, well, can we see his previous work? Of course. You know, all the listings that we have done together, I'll just portray them. They're like, oh, these are really nice. If it comes out just like this, I'm thinking, like, of course it will come out even better. Like, but every, like, Coming from the haircutting business, like you could be a great haircutting, but every haircut is going to be custom to a specific person, right? right? And if you're a good haircutting, that person is going to look good, and that's what you are doing. So each right. property is different. You're just going to emphasize that you know property to a prospective buyer from the angle of selling real estate. Speaking of that, this morning I actually cut my own hair. You did well, on a scale <laughs> one to ten. Uh, what do you want me to scale it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, am I at least a six? I'm harsh, but yeah, I will say five and a, you know, three quarters. That's it. I mean, well, you give me a five and I put on a number three. I just put on a number three and that's it. No, you look great. You always look great and neat. Uh, listen, before we hang up, is there anything you want to add um, to our conversation that we missed out on? Um, any any memories or you always remember when, when you talk about photography, the first thing pops in your mind, you're like, man, you know. Um, I, I just, it's been a, a pretty interesting journey because the photography was really just intended to be a side part of my web development business. And now I don't do websites at all. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I, I shot um, uh, in 2020, I shot 530 listings wow and then when, when the market got a little crazy and people were i mean i had more agents cancel photo jobs because the house sold before i even had a chance to take pictures i did a little bit less yeah the last couple it was years, a crazy market but though. then this year i'm on fire i've shot um over 250 houses this year so far wow so you saying is inventory is going up slightly i think it's the inventory that's going up yeah, it's Dang. keeping you busy. So looking right. at it, you're going to probably shoot like seven, 800 homes this year? No, pro probably. I mean, I'm on pace to shoot a little over six, Yeah, which would be the most two I've a ever day. shot in a year. Yeah, two a day. And for me, the ideal day is two. Yeah. I, I, I do my appointments for uh, 11 a.m., 1 p.m., and then if I have to, 3 p.m. Because it's hard what you do. Every time you come up to a property, you kind of it takes you a couple hours at least, right? Um. It, it takes me two hours to photograph from the time I get to my first job to the time I get to my second job is how I 
I see. You had to block your time. Now, it used to take me hours just to shoot a house and then like a half a day to process the pictures for one job. But yeah. Now, you know, I'm to the point now where I could shoot a typical house in about an hour. Okay. And then, but then uh, if it's a drone, the Matterport, of course, that adds right. to well, the Well, the time. drone is included in my photography. That was the one thing when I decided to go drone, I didn't okay. raise my prices. Okay. And my business like took off after that. I'm like, man, why don't I get this drone sooner? Yeah, but I just thought uh, the drone. I mean, well, you know, you fly a drone. I fly a drone. I like it. I mean, it literally takes five extra minutes. To, Correct to do the drone. Yeah, but investing in the drone, you right? Know, just taking right. off and doing all that I, stuff. Well, how I looked at it is throwing the drones into my customers was an investment in my business. Hundred percent. So it, it made my customers happy, makes a loyal, happy customer, and because my business is one hundred percent based on referrals. I was happy to do it for him. And I have to be honest with you, like the drone shots, I have the DJI 2 Air, I think, mm -hmm. and I just put it on HDR, you know. It takes fantastic photos. Like, I yeah. feel like I've never had to do anything, you know. Uh, before you picked up the a drone, I remember just, you know, getting it from one of my friends. This was my second one. I just wanted to fly just for the fun of it, like an RC car. Right. But then I found a passion for it, you know, making some other photography for different neighborhoods, you know. But just like anything else, you know, it's not my passion. My passion is selling real estate. Right, so, right. So and I, you do a great I, job at it. Thank you. You can thank tell you. it's your passion. Uh, I do love it. You know, when we first met it, it was like a few years back, and during even of our photography sessions, I used to ask, and then you kept telling me, like, Oscar, you know, just stick to it. You know, more more properties you sell, more people are going to find out. Just like you said, I didn't even have a business card when you first started this business, right? right. And, you know, I, I take that same principle. My, my, my always approach, like, how I'm going to make my client happy, right? Right. Stay on us, stay on it. And I tell everybody, like, coming back to the conversation, like, what's the strategy of selling a place? Get a good photographer that you work with, has got the same eye as you, Right. And you just find out all the information, all the questions a prospective buyer can ask you. Because the last thing you want to do is like, uh, I don't know. Once you say, I don't know, it, it just creates a lot of question right. mark, right? Then you put in the client in doubt. You have to know most of the answers. And if you, don't, if you do not know answers, just don't make an answer. A lot of agents do that. Just say, I just don't know it, you know? I'll get back to you on that. That's something that I missed out. And right. it happens, you know? And the number... Four, I think this is the most crucial point of any business. Pick up the phone. You have to pick up the you phone. You have to pick up the phone. This morning, I'm trying to make like four different offers for clients, and I called all these agents. Nobody picks up the phone calls. Text, email, phone calls, nobody picks it up. I think that's right. the most crucial part of doing it. That, and that is. You every, have to be responsive. You have to be responsive. And when I, when I go into listing appointments to meet these clients, and I will tell them, listen, there is a standard. And I know a lot of my colleagues in this uh, business, and they are fantastic people, and we have similar standards. But, you know, it's like having an Uber driver. You know, some Uber drivers are a little bit better, the way they take the bumps, the way they take the curves, the way they speed up and slow down, right? But all the cars are 2010 and newer, relatively speaking, and similar standards. And it's the same thing. Uh, I tell them, I will answer that phone. If it rings, I will make sure I don't care who he is, and I will keep showing that property until sales right. and keeping it with open houses and, of right. course. Well, listen, Joe, it's been great. I am so happy, and I'm so honored that you came to my uh, video podcasting. Well, I'm glad I came, too, and I remember when you were talking about doing this. I remember that. And, and if I could... Take credit for the name of your podcast. Ah, uh, that's another <laughs> thing. I totally blow it up. Listen, guys. So here I am. I'm doing a little study. Uh, what do they call that? What type of study they call it? Survey. Like, survey study. And I'm asking, like, if you the close colleague, you know, friends that I consider your friend in the business. And I came up with like a bunch of different names and all of that stuff. And it was like we had like a top five, top three, right? right? I shoot you some of them. And then actually Joe is the one that came up with the name. He says the real deal with Oscar because it's my, my idea and your uh, selection uh, was fantastic because I was like, this is exactly what I had in mind. Right. Because I wanted to portray a real deal such as yourself in this episode, right? right. Like the, the, the top pillars of the industry right. that we can discuss it. And also, it ties up to the real estate by right. real deal. Right. I thought it was a good wordplay. 
I, I think it was really good. Well, I really appreciate that, man. I, I apologize. I missed that from the get go, but right. yeah, I uh, should have emphasized I, it. And I just thought I about thank it. Thank you so now. much. Yeah. And um, you know, a, a shameless plug. I have a YouTube channel. It's Joey's Keto Kitchen dot com or Joey's Keto Kitchen. I do recipes. Cooking is my passion. I love to do photography too. But if uh, I had a choice, I'd be a chef. But <laughs> you know, here's the thing. You know, funny you said that. I love cooking. You see my you know Instagram stories. Right on the weekends, people are like, "Bro, you're always cooking." I'm like, "I love it." Please follow his uh, recipes. He's amazing. And what's your cat's name again? He's sometimes Junior. Junior. And Junior's always around and then scaving the place. But uh, most importantly, I also envy you for your fasting. And yeah. the longest fasting that you have done was 30 days? No, no. The longest I've done is 10. 10 days. 10 days. So 10 days you didn't eat? Nothing. Just water and coffee. Just, I just can't believe it. I keep telling my friends that I have my friend Joe. He's like, he didn't eat anything such a long time. How does that body does that? Um, the first couple of days is tough. Yeah. But then after that, you're fine. You know, I, I, I kind of let myself go. So I, I dropped uh, close to 35, 40 pounds. 35, 40 and then I pounds. put a couple back on, but um, I actually started May 19th of last year. So it's almost my one year anniversary of kind of changing my lifestyle and my eating. Wow. And uh, May 19th is going to be rolling around pretty soon. What's today? The 16th? 17th? Today's the 17th, I think. So yeah. two more days, I'm going hard in the pain again for a few months. I'm going to try to drop another 20 pounds. In the, Very good. I, I, know, I know you're going to do it because I remember when you started fasting, I'm like, wow, yeah. Joey. Like, yeah, I, I took I a can... little bit of a break. I was making some pizzas. I was having a little bit of fun. Oh, I know you're bringing cooking. Them carbs I know back you're in. cooking. It's pretty good, though. It's pretty so, intense. Yeah, so I put a, a couple pounds back on, which I wasn't too concerned about because I knew it was going to happen. But I also knew when May 19th rolled around, it was time to get serious again and just kind of push hard through the summer. I love to walk. And, and you walk too, which I... Yeah, I, in the mornings, yeah. I, I like to walk. Yeah, I try to get it and do a five-mile walk in the morning and that... that um, you know, I always remember that um, scene from A Wolf of Wall Street. You know, it says, when you start... You know, you're going to be thinking about money, making deals all the time. I don't want to get into the specific scene, but I think right. everybody got that Matthew McConaughey scenes, right. you know. Right. And I feel the same way. Like, I want to go to the gym, but I have deals in my mind. I'd rather to just take a walk and think about these deals, how I'm going to put them together. I get such a high, you yeah. know, just taking yeah. that three, four mile walk in the morning. And yeah. there's a lot to be said about walking. It's probably for, for weight loss. Yeah. It's probably the best exercise you can they do. They say better than running because there's no, you know. You're not beating your joints up. Correct. You're not um, melting your muscle down because, you know, when you're depriving yourself of when you, because it's still calories in, calories out. Hundred percent. So if you do too much cardio, you're going to lose muscle. Correct. So you know, I mean, we're a couple of buff guys, and yeah, we want always to stay been buff. thick. We want to stay, yeah, been little, always been little. Actually, I was a scrawny little guy when I was a freshman in high school. I weighed eighty six pounds. Believe it or not. Oh wow! I was always the biggest kid in yeah, school. Yeah, know? I was a little dude, and then I I kind of shot up in my junior year. I put on like forty pounds in one year. I started working out on the sixth grade, and I, I remember that I had this. I dropped, like, so much weight. I had a six-pack, and we just bought a summer house in Turkey. You got a six-pack. I got a case. Oh, trust me. <laughs> Back then, you know, I had, I, now I have, like, an investment and, and a six-pack in there here you <laughs> in a boat. That's it. But I remember, like, how much attention I was getting, like, with, on the sixth, right. seventh grade. It, those were good years. But listen, man, thank you so much for great, coming. Oscar. Thanks uh, for inviting me. Of course, my pleasure. Thanks for coming in. I think this is going to be great for everyone to get to know you. And I, I, this is one of the things that I want to do with the po video podcasting that I want to emphasize and put people that I l love working together uh, in front of the camera and talk to the audience on one-on-one. -on -one. And just real quick for, for those agents out there that use cell phones, I want to help them be able to get great pictures with their cell phones if I can give them just a real quick tip. Go for it. Okay, what you want to do is you want to open up your camera app and look at it and then turn your camera app on and turn on your phone app and dial 954-594-9071, <laughs> and you'll get really good real estate photos from your cell phone. Well said. I love that. <laughs> you got me going for a while. I'm like, what is he going to say that? <laughs> I was thinking you're going to see like, well, you're going to set the exposure level. You're going to take this angle, you know, chest angle, right. this and this. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, definitely. You Try this. And call me. See how that works out, okay? <laughs> Joey, you are the best, All man. Right, I love you, buddy. Man, hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. And hope to see you guys soon. And I will be 
put in all Joey's information, including his cooking channel on YouTube, in the descriptions. Oh, thanks. Absolutely. Why not? You know, maybe I know it's a hobby for you. But maybe you and I can open a restaurant at one point. (laughs) Boom. (laughs) Take care, guys, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.